Join us today for some top tips on how you can keep your heart healthy. Hello and welcome to this live web TV show. I'm Vicky Letch. Now, high cholesterol and high blood pressure are the biggest causes of heart disease and if they're not properly treated, can seriously increase your risk of a heart attack or stroke. Now, these conditions are manageable, but many of those who live with them often struggle to keep themselves healthy or don't even know that they have them in the first place. Joining us today to discuss keeping our hearts healthy are Dr. Mike Napton, Pharmacist Dr. Mahendra Patel and Jill Wakeford, who herself has suffered with high cholesterol. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here. So coming up on the show today, our panel will tell us all the telltale signs of high cholesterol and high blood pressure. We'll also discuss all the ways you can keep your heart healthy from lifestyle changes to managing your meds. And, of course, all of your questions will be answered here live. Many of you have already pre-submitted questions, but because we are live, if you have any questions that you would like to ask our panel, please use the box on your screen and we'll do our utmost to tackle them over the course of the next 15 minutes or so. So again, thank you to all three of you for being here. Um, Dr. Mike, let's start with you if we can. <coughs> what are the main signs and, and how common is this really, high cholesterol and high blood pressure? Uh, well, both high blood pressure and high cholesterol are very common. Uh, and one of the interesting things about them is that you don't have any symptoms. So you don't Gosh. know you've got a high blood pressure or high cholesterol in the vast majority, of, I would say virtually all cases, uh, unless you have your blood pressure measured, either in the pharmacist or in the, with your practice nurse or the GP, and you have a blood test, and that will measure your cholesterol. And these are important things to find out because they're both uh, significant risk factors for developing heart disease or stroke later in life. So we're actually seeing um, some arteries, I believe, at the moment that are, are damaged, if you like, with fatty buildup, with that high cholesterol. So actually, as much as it's preventative, this is a really serious message that you need to get across. That, that's right. So the, the diseases that we're worried about are essentially heart attack, stroke, and narrowing of the arteries in the legs, peripheral mm -hmm. artery disease. And that's caused by this fatty buildup in the lining of your artery called atheroma and um, obviously that causes a restriction in the blood flow and could cause angina or mini strokes so-called transient ischemic attacks if you have them in the brain but if the artery gets completely blocked the heart muscle or the brain tissue that that blood vessel supplies will lose its blood supply and unless you restore that blood supply that tissue will die and you'll either have a heart attack or a full-blown stroke which are often fatal but um, mm. if not can leave you uh, uh, with some impaired cardiac function or disability from a stroke. Jill, let's get to you then. You've actually lived through some of this. Your story is just astonishing. For the people watching at home, can we go back to how you got diagnosed with high cholesterol? Well, I was um, diagnosed with high cholesterol um, some t so a few years ago, and I was put on a low dose of statins. But um, a couple of years ago, I did actually have a heart attack. Um, which I didn't really know about. Mm. It took about three days before I actually sort of did anything about it. Um, so that was a bit of a shock. I didn't really expect that. Uh, but it, these things do happen, so you just sort of get on with it, really. Um, I'm on the higher dosage of, of statins now, but I would never not take them because of that. Because people said to me at the time, well, if you hadn't been taking the statins, it would have happened probably a lot earlier. And, you know, it would have been a lot worse as well. So you so. take your medication, but Absolutely. obviously after having your heart attack, yeah. did you also then look at some lifestyle choices? Have you had to implement changes to your day-to-day -day life? Well, I've always led a fairly active life and you know, did a lot of exercise. Well, I have to say, you look very fit. <laughs> you look very healthy to me. Oh, very yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I've continued to go in the gym. I, I go about three times a week and I've always watched what I, I, I've eaten and things like that. But since the heart attack, I've cut down on salt. Mm -hmm. And I have cut down on the full fat milk and I now have semi skimmed. Uh, so there ha there's still things that you can do, not so much cheese and things like that. So there's still things you can do just to keep everything in check, really, because it, it's so worth it. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Mahendra, I do believe um, we're, we're trying to get this message across, and the British Heart Foundation are doing it in quite a fun way using Tommy Cooper. Is this right? That's exactly right. And um, it's taking your medicines properly, it, the importance of taking your medicines. Uh, particularly in heart disease, uh, of course, as, as well as other conditions. Um, as you can see, that there's 
lots of people who don't actually take the medicines as prescribed. Mm. One in five people. Uh, a study Why do you think that is? Do you think it is because it is perhaps something that doesn't have those outward symptoms? Yeah. So they think, well, I, I'm not noticing it's doing anything to me, so I don't need to take the medication? Or the, the, This is one of the reasons that, that like... Dr. Mike said that it, it's asymptomatic, so they mm. think, well, hold on, there's nothing wrong with me at this point in time. Should I be taking the medication? I'll go without it for a little while. Um, and that's when they need to speak to their doctor, their pharmacist, their, their practice nurse, uh, and get support and advice, really. But it, it's all the whole package, really, in terms of taking your medicines correctly, as prescribed, to get the maximum out of your medicines, really, and hence the Take Your Medicines campaign. For people watching now, what sort of medical options are there um, if you are suffering from high blood pressure or high cholesterol? Well, um, in terms of medical options, it, it, it's whatever the, the GP decides is most appropriate for that condition, for that patient. It's not one size fits all, mm -hmm. um, depending on the other parameters within what's going on within that patient's life, really, um, and health condition. But you would have statins to prevent heart disease, as Jill said. That would be a preventive medicine. You'd be on aspirins. You'd be on an antihypertensive to reduce your blood pressure. All these things um, reduce your chance of having a further event of a heart attack. And Jill, I, I, it seems like such a silly question to ask, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. If you hadn't have suffered your heart attack, do you think you'd be so good with your medication? Um, well, I, I've, always, I've always been quite good at yeah. taking them, I must admit. So it just goes to prove, really, that anything can happen. So I wouldn't even dream of not taking them. I mean, they've been prescribed by the experts. Mm -hmm. You've gone to them because you've got a problem. So... It's a, to me, it's, it really doesn't a feature. A no-brainer, yes. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. However, not everybody is as, uh, as you I are. And it, um, yeah. So in our research, in preparation for this mm -hmm. um, study, we, we found that a number of um, patients, about one in three people on their cholesterol tablets and one in four taking blood pressure tablets admitted to not taking them properly as prescribed. So these are large numbers of people. Mm -hmm. And what is worse for me as a GP, they wouldn't... Um, uh, admit that to their doctor. They feel embarrassed or worried or awkward uh, or some even said they they fear a judgmental reaction from their general mm. practitioner. I want to say here and now, um, as a doctor I can't do my job unless I know what people are doing with their pills. So if you're having problems with your pills, whether it's side effects or you can't remember to take them, you want some memory aids or medicine, med there are all sorts of things we can do. Just talk to us about it unless Absolutely. we know unless we know what's happening we can't address it and, and you can't put things right for them no and, and and one of the big issues was um almost a third of people who we talked to didn't make the link between cholesterol and heart disease so if you don't understand mm. that there's a link between cholesterol yeah. and heart disease yes. why would you take the pills so all of this i hope people will feel able to mm. to discuss it uh, either with us or the bhf heart nurses on our help line and um, get as much information as they mm -hmm. need to feel comfortable and confident about taking their pills. We've placed a lot of importance on taking the medication Dr Mahendra but how about people that you come across, um, do, you, do you ask them about their lifestyles, do you think, do you know what this needs to be addressed because it could be something they're doing that's, that's not necessarily the healthy choice. Well yeah but because li lifestyle is very important in terms of looking after your health for prevention of heart disease really um, and the pharmacist's role is now mm. to look at people's lifestyles as part of their key role um, in managing uh, uh, mm. uh, somebody who's suffering from heart disease really. Um, in terms of looking after the health from a from a lifestyle perspective, a lot of the community pharmacies are all now offering services in terms of um, looking after your diet, promoting uh, healthy exercise, signposting into the right direction, helping you to stop smoking. So all these services are either offered in pharmacy, in the community pharmacy, which readily everybody can access almost free of charge um, without any appointments in most cases. Yeah. Um, and and it, it, it's there so that the message can be easily accessible widely up and down the country by Absolutely. all Absolutely, there's no excuse these days because actually, um, excuse me if I say this Dr Mike, but pharmacies are like your little walk-in clinics these days. You can get some fantastic advice and help. Um, so certainly don't ignore that as an option. Let's start with your questions then. We have so many sent in, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna kick off with George R. George R says, <clears throat> why are statins so good for you? Who wants to take that one? 
Well, um, Statin's uh, work. Um, do you mind? Yeah, I don't mind at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a go. It's best to share. answer. No, no, it's best to answer the questions. You know the answer to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So Statin's work by uh, um, working on the liver to reduce the amount of cholesterol that you produce in the liver. Most of the cholesterol circulating in the blood mm -hmm. comes from the liver. So this is what the drug does. And we know from studies over the last 10, 15 years, huge studies across the world, that the lower your cholesterol, the lower your risk of heart disease and stroke, as we've discussed, potentially fatal conditions, serious mm -hmm. conditions anyway. So for people at high risk of heart disease or of established heart disease, uh, giving them anti-cholesterol pills, statins, uh, will reduce their risk of heart disease in that way. A lot of people think that uh, all your cholesterol comes from your diet, but mm -hmm. in fact, most of it is is endogenously produced in the liver, and so reducing it with mm. a statin is about. And these studies are, are pretty unequivocal. I thought I, I'll put my hand up. I thought it was diet until yes, I knew so we were having this chat and I did my research. Mm. I absolutely thought it was diet. Well, don't underestimate. Diet does play a part. So mm. people who are overweight or eat a diet that's high in saturated fats, mm. that's also going to put you at risk. But when it comes to cholesterol, m you can have a reduction in your cholesterol through dietary means, lifestyle means, but a lot of people will uh, benefit even more from statins. So it's not either right. or, yeah. it's both. Combination. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, fingers on buzzers. Let's see who's going to grab this one. This is from <laughs> Paul Wilkinson. Hi, I get adverse reaction to statins. Is there anything else I can take? Well, it depends partly on how long he's been taking the statins. Um, he's saying that he's, on, he's having adverse reactions. Has it just occurred mm. recently? Has he been coping with it and managing? My advice is he should see the GP. He should obviously consult with a pharmacist who can also talk to the GP and possibly talk about an alternative treatment, really. Um, but it, it shouldn't be something that he should tolerate mm -hmm. if there's any adverse reactions. There are other options. There are other are, options that are yeah. there, um, and that, that could be easily worked out with the GP, really. Great. Uh, this one from Simon Hickling. Thank you very much. Um, I have taken several medications for over 10 years and I found that one or, sorry, and have found that one or all appear to suppress my appetite. Whilst my stomach says I'm hun hungry, I just don't want the food. That must be awful. Do you know if this is a side effect of any of the meds at all? <laughs> Could be. And um, th I often get patients uh, telling me uh, they've got side effects mm. but as we've already said many patients won't admit to having side effects for their pills for whatever reason I think the, the, so the first message is talk to your doctor about it but it is by no means straightforward I don't know if you'd agree working out which pill it mm -hmm. is now there are some mm. pills that are more likely to cause this sort of side effect and others that aren't so that's where you'd start. And of course, if the symptoms have been present for 10 years, it's likely to be those pills that you've been on for 10 years. Mm. And the newer ones are probably not the problem. So I think what you might need to do is to go back. And what I would do under those circumstances is ask the patient to come in with all their medications. And we can go through them one by one, work out what they're for, why they're taking them, and then work out a way of working out which one might be causing the side effect or not. Because for an asymptomatic condition, it's unreasonable, I think, to expect a patient to put up with side effects when they feel well and you're trying to Yes, absolutely, them. yeah, yeah. So I was yeah. really reluctant yes. to take anything like that because I felt absolutely normal and just the blood tests were showing me other things and, the, you know, the blood pressure as well. Yeah. And but for you, you haven't suffered um, side effects, do you? No, I haven't. No, no, no. no. I mean, this is a bit of an eye-opener, really. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I am lucky, I guess, but uh, if it's so rare anyway, then... I mean, I would probably persevere for a little while, but then I would go back to my GP or the pharmacy yeah. and just say, I'm sorry, guys, but I really am not getting on very well with these at all. And But I still want to take statins because, I mean, I think basically they saved my life. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's a process of elimination. You may remove that from their, their yeah. um, pill well, you, got, and then see Basically, the you've got two, three options. One is you can reduce the dosage of pills yeah. and then monitor the blood pressure and cholesterol, see if they're still controlled because sometimes you may be giving people too much and you might be able to pull back a bit. Mm. Or you'd switch from one uh, drug to another and see if it suited them better. So, it, But it is a bit trial and error. Uh, yeah. So do bear with it. It can take a little bit of time Absolutely. to work out which is where the problem lies. But we usually get to uh, a satisfactory solution in the end, you know. And it's worth it. 
Yeah. It could be that yeah. it, it may not be due to the medication anyway. Mm. There could be some underlying cause there as well, which needs to be looked at really. Yeah, don't necessarily assume it is the, the medication. medication. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's move on then to Gerardus. Thank you very much. Why does my blood pressure stay high? I eat the right foods, I exercise one hour a day, I sleep okay, I have no illnesses other than a disability. So, raised blood pressure isn't always associated with being unfit or unhealthy or overweight. It is more common if you are sedentary and overweight. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, th the condition we call it in medicine essential hypertension. So this is uh, high blood pressure for unknown cause. We presume it's to do with um, your genetic makeup and it often runs in families. Um, so just because you are uh, ultra fit mm. doesn't mean you might not be having uh, problems and putting yourself at risk of heart disease with raised blood pressure. So that's why everybody over the age of 40 now is offered this NHS health check to see whether or not they have got high blood pressure and if they have we can do something about it either through lifestyle uh, but it sounds as though this person is doing everything right. Absolutely. In yeah. which case the only option yeah. then is to go on to medication to lower the blood pressure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much to all three of you. Thank you for being here. But yes, we are out of time. My thanks to Dr. Mike, Dr. Mahendra and Jill for joining us. If you want to find out more about keeping your heart healthy, you can go to bhf, that's bhf.org.uk forward slash Tommy. Also, if you would rather speak to someone, you can call a qualified nurse on the British Heart Foundation helpline and that's 0300 333 333. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.